Okay, so this is the post show. Welcome everybody. We talked about the introduction, the vision, the customers, the pricing, the affiliates, the future. One thing I forgot to show, I actually showed it in the pre-show, which will be deleted. So I wanted to show this really quickly, is this is my keyboard and mouse here. These are my hands. Um, <laughs> basically, these buttons right here are keyboard shortcuts. It's a really cool way to control your interview gauge. So as you can see there, with the click of a button, I can turn it on and switch between them. Just because, you know, when you're doing a lot of live streaming, it can be a little tricky um, managing all the buttons and everything. So it's just nice to kind of use some button shortcuts. So we were using that today. That's how we get all this stuff done. Every week, just some more tips, just some cool stuff. But we've got Tom here. The questions are coming in. Um, we talked about mobile apps. Can this be used as a learning management system? Is that the way your customer from the construction company is using this? Yeah, actually, great question. Um, we actually used to have a completely separate product that we called Torch LMS for learning management system. It was based on the same general architecture and, and um basically code set, but it was catered towards, and we based it off of um, a client of ours who came to us, and she's a, a veterinary clinic, and she wanted to replace all of the digital signage in clinics with a quasi IPTV, but educational system that people could literally go through with a click of a mouse and basically watch content, take an exam, pass the exam, fail, or it was, it was, it was Pretty simple. I mean, it was really supposed to just kill about 20 minutes of time while you're waiting to take your pet into the into the um, uh, doctor, see the veterinarian. But we kind of took that idea and we expanded it to apply to a complete end-to-end -end learning management system. So what we did with that product is we rolled it into Tiki Live, and there's a way that people are using it today, and that's actually exactly what the people out in Arizona are doing with that stamp concrete business is they set up a whole series of lessons and they bundle them under uh, particular channel groups and lesson types and each lesson type comes with its own subscription. So they're actually a white label Tiki Live solution with their own brand, their own customers, their own users. They're in complete control of everything from content to monetization to um, to day-to-day uh, -day support and um, that's what they use it for. So um, uh, it's, it's evolved quite a bit over the years. Um, it's not a you know, quasi LMS as traditional standards um, apply, but it can be used for it very effectively. Interesting. Yeah, I can see it even if you were just doing on demand, if you had a bunch of on demand videos you're trying to either give away for free or maybe make a little extra money with advertising uh, or paid live events. Now, can you have paid non live events, like just pay to watch? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, okay. so I mean, you can slap a $2 a month. Um, subscription fee on a video on demand library um, as well. Interesting. So you could just have a monthly subscription to just access to X, X amount of videos or just a single live event. Yeah, or, or all of the above. You could basically license one particular channel um, under a $10 fee and all the video on demand assets that you attach to it come with it. Interesting. See, these are the kind of things that corporations are going to want because if they're monetizing their content, they need that kind of feature. Um, other couple other questions here. Um, I don't know how you want to answer this one, but how does it compare to Wowza? Um, so Wowza is actually uh, an origin streaming service, which we actually use at Tiki Live. So um, we highly customize our Wowza installations, our Wowza licenses, but that is actually the core. Um, fundamental service that operates for our live streaming and actually our channel manager application. Um, so actually, if you go with a white label Tiki Live solution, we require you to actually purchase your own Waza license and, um, and integrate with the solution. So it's, a, it's, it's, like, it's like a value add layer on top of uh, Wowza. Yeah, so basically Wowza, Wowza is uh, a great service for live streaming media management. Um, but um, we basically remove all of the technical knowledge, expertise, and requirements to manage it on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and when it comes to you know 24/7 live streams or even just managing any sort of live streams, um, we've added a whole lot of services on top of it that you know Wows is used exclusively for the live streaming and the video on demand playback and all of our services on the back and help you manage that content that you're publishing through. Cool. 
Um, so that is that's a great answer to that one. I thought I wasn't sure what was going to happen on that one. Um, multi language support. So um, the answer is yes, we do. Um, uh, it depends on what we're, what direction we're taking on. So we can um, roll in uh, multi language on like our closed captioning module, for example. If you have video on demand, you have different closed captions. You can upload the different languages within the closed captions. We support that. If you are a white label um, operator and you want your site applications to instantly translate to you know 10 different languages we have that support as well tiki has i think about six or seven of them integrated on the web presence our apps are up to about i want to say 17 or 18 different languages that are published in the uh, respective app stores cool all right i'm gonna keep firing these at you because we've only got a couple more minutes here um can licensed content be included from a satellite content provider Yes. Um, so you'll actually see a couple of our live channels at tkilive.com are just that. Um, for example, uh, we've got um, Enlace TV. We've also got um, One American News. Uh, we've got a channel called Tough TV. At, um, so yeah, so basically a few of those at the top of the list are under live channels. Um, again, uh, within the next three or four weeks, we're actually going to be coming up, uh, coming out with a brand new bundle of channels that are your traditional cable, cable channels. Um, and so uh, when it comes to a white label operator or a customer at tkilive.com, all you have to do is basically show us the license that you have to run that content. And we will you know, help you um, with uh, get, get the channel to your um, OTT streaming uh, solution, whether it be a channel at Tiki Live or if you're a white label provider and you got your own channels mapped up. Um, we've got uh, our own um, level of expertise within teleports and head end services. Um, if you need help transporting it from point A to point B, meaning from you know the place where the download's occurring to your own data center or ours, um, we can help you out with that. Interesting. So um, that sounds great. Now, how does Tiki Live operate overseas? Uh, only can a, can affiliates only do that, or does Tiki Live have two level distribution? Is a is there a partner who handles the affiliates like that? Um, we don't have uh, an exclusive partner. I mean, basically anybody and everybody who comes to Tiki Live who wants to become an affiliate can do that. Um, we've got a couple of um, uh, 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 white label solutions that are heavy into the affiliate side of their business uh, under their brand. And they hit like India, Bangladesh, um, even Russia. Um, they hit those hard. They, they focus and they actually specialize in that. But as far as TikiLive.com is concerned, we, we don't have any exclusivity. Um, to that. We have people that do use it and they do sign people up from, you know, different regions around the planet. So Smart AV, um, who's asking a bunch of these questions, should probably look, if possible, look into a white labeling solution. I know he's from Turkey. A um, couple more questions here. Can it allow the admin to ban users to fast forward the video content or go to the test level? Uh, can you like mandate watching a 20 minute course, for example? I'm just, I'm just processing the question. Oh, the users. Oh, gotcha. So, all right. So basically remove the seek bar and force them to watch every single frame. Um, right now, no, but that's actually a great, great um, uh, feature. And one thing we do here at Tiki Lab, because we are, uh, we own the code, we built the code, our whole team behind, we have 25 people are banging our way on keyboards every day. Features like that that come from our user uh, base, we take very seriously, and we actually roll it into our roadmap. And so something like that, if we get interest once, twice, three times, I'll throw it on the top of our radar, and we'll actually roll it out in a future version of TP Live. Cool. Uh, a couple more questions still coming in here, and I love companies like that who can turn around and uh, you know make changes and do things. In fact, Zoom video conferencing, who has like 300 employees, but I think a really dedicated user group. We use them for bringing in our remote participants. We're using Zoom right now with you, and there was a big problem where if you're in gallery view with like six or eight people. You really don't want to see the return video. You don't want to see your video, just the others. When I'm bringing it into my live stream, I told the CEO last week, and he'll say he said he'll have, he'll put the feature in shortly. So I, I love when you can you can find features that are really needed, and companies are being proactive as opposed to reactive. Um, it looks like uh, okay. So, uh, one more question here for, on multi language. Is there a multi language interface? So so if we're talking about the chat room, uh, we don't have instant translation chat services available presently. We actually did way back in the ways of Google's API um, when it was more or less free. 
what ended up happening is we had a pretty hefty bill from it uh, that popped up because we realized um, a lot of our free broadcasters were using it exclusively for a track chan translation service that they were billing people for. And so unfortunately we had to depreciate that product uh, for the time being. That was actually a couple of years ago. We just haven't quite had the interest to roll it back in. Okay. Um, and then Daniel uh, Wright is saying he wants to broadcast his church services to nursing homes and uh, it's really easy to do that with a Roku. Uh, you mentioned Roku. Tell us a little bit more about that. Easy peasy, uh, Daniel. Basically, all you'll do is you'll set up your live channel, which at Tiki Live, if you're, you know, if you can run email, you can figure out your live broadcast within a half hour. Um, once you do that, we'll literally give you a download your own Roku application button, which will be your brand, your logos, your color scheme. And what you'll do with that is you'll install it on a Roku box, literally walk over to your um, nursing home or wherever else you want to go. Plug it into the TV, you'll see your big beautiful application listed there in your Roku homepage. Open it up and it'll fire up your channel immediately. And so you'll have your live stream hitting your Roku within minutes of um, plugging it in without you having to actually code anything. It's literally a download, log into your Roku owner account if you're familiar with that, upload the package file to it, and then you'll see your public uh, channel come, come to be if Roku approves you, or you just type in your uh, vanity code that Roku provides you for private channels and um, it'll be listed on your Roku box. So Tom, just to give people a little bit of um, basically um, a preview for everybody, I'm gonna, I just logged into my back end of my, my personal account here. So um, do you wanna just kind of show people what that looks like, kind of walk them through this, this back end? Yeah, sure. So um, basically there's, there's a whole lot of um, tools and statistics for viewer metrics to kind of help you improve and figure out what works best for you. But like the go live, for example, section, that's your live channels. So you'll see here we have um, you know, a couple of channels that you've already created. Um, so you can go and you can manage those particular channels. You can change the description title. You can choose where you want to publish it to, mobiles, Roku, web, or you can just kind of make it a private channel that nobody can locate without you know, special invite. Um, if you want to click on the blue broadcast button in the top right corner. Uh-oh, I clicked on the WordPress. Blue broadcast button, got it. So now let's just pick a, a, a PTZ Optics channel, for example. So if we scroll down, is what we do is we actually offer a wide array of different broadcasters that we support. And a lot of these third-party broadcasters that we get a lot of questions on will actually give you a full-on video tutorial. So yeah, you'll oh, see wow. Wirecast is there, um, uh, XSplit, VMix, a lot of the common um, broadcasters there. And we kind of walk you through the whole process of getting live. So yeah, so this is an example of, uh, this actually might be me shooting a video of an ATM uh, from Black Magic, and we kind of walk you through the whole, um, uh, you know, how you configure it and, um, and basically use that particular device. Um, so that's the live channels, live streaming, you know, a couple clicks of a button you can get live. Uh, under upload video, um, which is the next main header on the left, that's your video on demand library that you can manage. Uh, and I know, Paul, I think you, um, you added a bunch of videos. So you can open up my videos, for example, and we'll see the library that you've added already. Okay, people are asking for your uh, your email. I was gonna do that, but okay. So my my video channel. Um, what are we looking for? Oh yeah, if you can just put your email in the chat, Tom. Yep, just did. Okay, so it looks like I've got. Is this this is what you want to look at here? Uh, so this is your this is your live channel. So this is um, but I'm um, under if you go oh, upload, upload video. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. And then I can go to my videos. These are all my videos here. Exactly. So you'll see here, this is um, where Paul um, had actually published uh, this, this ride array. So yeah, if you highlight over like Roku, for example. So that particular video, as a video on demand, can be accessed from Roku as well. So it's not just the live streams that go to that white label Roku application you built, but also the video on demand that you publish through your account. So you see if it goes right to left, it'll show HTML5 for mobile devices as well as standard web-based browsers. Um, so that's just a way that you can actually manage and view, quickly view um, all the different videos that are in your particular platform as well. So Tom, how would someone find this video on Roku? So if, if you want um, people to actually watch this, this stream, um, you can click on the thumbnail for the video, for example. Okay. And so this is, this is your preview interface where you can make the change. But if you click on the public page, this is going to land on the uh, public facing uh, front end. 
um, Tiki Live. We're actually, we did a pretty big facelift on this. We're gonna be going live with a new version of our web presence for the next two or three weeks. But so this is, you know, similar to YouTube where it has, um, you know, the actual video um, in front of you. And then also it gives you, you know, the suggested videos that are related to that particular clip. Yours happen to all be the videos loaded to your account because of course your videos are more applicable to your content than the rest of them on Tiki Live. But so people could come in and as long as you search for it, or, or sorry, published it, people could search for a brief history and basically pull up this particular video in our search results. Um, it's suggested search very similar to YouTube um, as well. So you can um, basically find the, the front end of the videos here. And again, we're gonna give it a pretty big facelift here in the next uh, two or three weeks um, that we're pretty excited about. It's, it actually follows the same look and feel of that Grant Cardone page that you gave us earlier today. Yeah, I know. I, I, I love the look of that, and I think that's what really makes it exciting. Um, tell me, um, again, the Roku part. It, so is, by, is it already on Roku, or do I need to set up a Roku channel still? You'll need to create one. So basically, um, go to uh, My Boxes, mm -hmm. and... Uh, uh, you have to build a build a Roku application. Oh wow! So this is this is the whole process here. So basically, you'll call it whatever you want to call it. So here, you can actually swap out all the logos. Right here, we give you all the logos in front of you, so you know exactly what the specs are from them. But you can replace them all yourself. Wow! If you click build Roku app, should I do that? Yeah, you can go ahead and do it is what's gonna happen is it does take about 10 minutes or so. It's actually gonna build this Roku application on our server immediately. Once it's ready, it's gonna go from this pending status to built, and you'll be able to download the actual uh, package file for Roku and upload it to your Roku developer account with that branding that you replaced, if you replaced any. And it's, again, gonna be all your video content as well as your channels that you've actually chosen to publish. Wow. So, so there is a little bit more of a step to get onto Roku, but you guys make it fairly easy. Yeah, I mean, we're as easy as, as it gets. I mean, and what's, what's unique about us as far as Roku app development is we let our publishers put it under their own developer account, which means people don't, when they search for it on the Roku store, they don't realize it's Tiki Lock. They think it's, you know, under your own brand. Interesting. A um, couple more questions, and then we'll wrap up the, uh, the post show here. Can you sell corporate licenses that allow... Uh, them to share workers as credits who need it? Um, great question. So we're actually, we actually don't have like a bulk purchase option available for an entire group to gain access to content. But what you can do is let's say you put up a, a pay per view or a, a pay for access piece of content and you have a group of people that you want to get access to that shouldn't have to pay for it, like the managers who are throwing the event or you know, even the producers and publishers who can't make it to the, the actual event or the uh, venue, um, you just grant them a ticket through the back end and there's basically a, an access granted for that premium content without actually charging them for it. Almost like a coupon code? It, exactly right. Interesting. Okay, well, Tom's email's in the chat. It's Tom uh, Jazak at TikiLive.com, so it can't be too much easier. Tom Jazak's uh, spelled right there below. Um, thank you so much for being on the show, Tom. That's all the time we have today, but uh, I would love to have you on again. Um, w by the way, these guys have webinars every Tuesday at... Tuesday, 4.30 p.m. Eastern. 4.30 p.m. Eastern, so that'll be 1.30 Pacific. And um, they go over a lot of different stuff. They're using our PTZ Optics cameras. And our IP joystick. Yeah, yeah, you guys can check out. Uh, we get to use and uh, play with Paul's toys uh, each and every Tuesday. And, uh, and you'll see the quality that got upgraded about three weeks ago from our recordings. Uh, Nick and I looked like a bunch of goons, and now we're, you know, half easy to look at. <laughs> well, it's not going to fix that, Tom. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just joking. Thanks so much for being here. Everybody take care. Um, thank you, as always. Enjoy your weekend. We'll see you next Friday. Appreciate it.